Hello everyone and welcome as we join in this morning just to read God's word together again. We're going to be reading Proverbs chapter 10 this morning. So let's read it together now, again as usual from the New Living Translation. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise child brings joy to a father. A foolish child brings grief to a mother. Tainted wealth has no lasting value, but right living can save your life. The Lord will not let the godly go hungry, but he refuses to satisfy the cravings of the wicked. Lazy people are soon poor. Hard workers get rich. A youth, a wise youth harvests in the summer, but one who sleeps during harvest is a disgrace. The godly are shard with blessings. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. We have happy memories of the godly, but the wicked name of the wicked person rots away. The wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. People with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. People who wink at wrong cause trouble, but a bold reproof promotes peace. The words of the godly are a life-giving fountain. The words of the wicked conceal violent intentions. Hatred stirs up quarrels, but love makes up, love makes up for all offences. Wise words come from the lips of people with understanding, but those lacking sense will be beaten with a rod. Wise people treasure knowledge, but the babbling of a fool invites disaster. The wealth of the rich is their fortress, the poverty of the poor is their destruction. The earnings of the godly enhance their lives, but evil people squander their monies on sin. People who accept discipline are on a pathway to life, but those who ignore correction will go astray. Hiding hatred makes you a liar, slanders others makes you a fool. Too much talk leads to sin, be sensible and keep your mouth shut. The words of the godly are like sterling silver, the heart of the fool is worthless. The words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by their lack of common sense. The blessing of the Lord makes the person rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Doing wrong is fun for a fool, but living wisely brings pleasure to the sensible. The fears of the wicked will be fulfilled, the hopes of the godly will be granted. When the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. Lazy people irritate their employers like vinegar to the teeth or smoke in the eyes. Fear of the Lord lengthens one's life, but of the years the wicked are cut short. The hopes of the godly result in happiness, but the expectation of the wicked come to nothing. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to those with integrity, but it destroys the wicked. The godly will never be disturbed, but the wicked will be removed from the land. The mouth of the godly person gives wise advice, but the tongue that deceives will be cut off. The lips of the godly speak helpful words, but the, the mouths of wicked speak perverse words. Amen. And that is Proverbs chapter 10. This is where we start in Proverbs to get into um, where Solomon seems to be throwing so much at us at times. And again, as we go on through Proverbs at times, it might seem like there's contradiction. Um, we could spend hours upon hours just looking at this one chapter, taking it one verse at a time. Um, most people's Bibles will have let it out that there's a gap a physical gap between the verses because every verse is nearly like a statement of, of its own. But you do see recurring themes um, through it all. One of them is about how people speak, how people open their mouths, maybe without thinking. Um, we're all very good at doing that at times. Um, but just let me pick out two of the verses for this morning for a little thought. The first one is verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and he adds no sorrow with it. What does it mean to be blessed by God? Being blessed by God means being loved by God, being cared for by, by God, being part of his family. Now, there's no 
promise in that that you aren't physically rich, that you have wealth or possessions. It says that the blessings of the Lord makes a person rich, but the understanding of that is that it's a full life, a rich life, fulfillment. And it says he adds no sorrow with it. God doesn't give us sorrow. Um, this world, because of the sin that's in it, gives us sorrow, but God doesn't give us sorrow. But then the verse that goes along with that is verse 25 for us to remember. It says, when the storms of life come, the wicked are whirled away, but the godly have a lasting foundation. It doesn't say if storms of life come along, but when the storms of life come. Uh, ups and downs in life are a fact for all of us. It's the world that we live in because it's full of sin. So we will have good times and we will have bad times. But what makes a difference is having the right foundation. Building our lives upon Christ. Because we always, always have that foundation. And yes, at times and things, we talk about things in life being stripped away or taken from us. And that does happen. But when we have that foundation, we always have that firm building. Think of it in terms of physical storm. If you see a house um, and there's been a tornado and it hasn't had a good foundation, everything is wiped away completely. Everything is completely destroyed. Whereas if you have a good foundation, you always have that building point again, that point to start from. And the whole point is whenever we build our lives in Christ, we always have a firm foundation, a foundation that cannot be taken away. The other way of looking at it, if you want another sort of visual example is if you've ever seen buildings that have been constructed to withstand earthquakes and how in the foundations you have built in shock absorbers and, and, and areas of flex and you could have buildings all around completely flattened but because of the right foundation a building stands and it looks completely untouched. Like, yeah, maybe inside it will show cracks and it will show the signs that something has happened, but the building is intact. And that's a guess. Whenever we have our foundation on God, then through all the ups and downs in life, we hold on to him. But more importantly, he holds on to us because he is our firm foundation. So, yeah, I wonder today, do you feel blessed by God? And if you do so, how will you build on that firm foundation? Because to have that blessing, we need the foundation. So no matter what comes along today, if your foundation is in God, know that he is with you and that he will help you and protect you, protect your spirit, protect your faith, protect your trust in him so that he can draw you closer to him. So yeah. Let's pray about that this morning, folks. Father, thank you for all the wisdom of your word, for all that it teaches us. Lord, thank you that you do bless us each and every day. You bless us by loving us and caring for us, uh, giving us so much. Lord, giving in a way that the world doesn't understand, in a way the world doesn't measure or can't measure, because we have a foundation which is you, which is your son and what he has done for us. So Father, thank you. And today, no matter what comes our way, no matter what comes to try and shake us and floor us, Lord, help us to be reminded of having a foundation of you and that we draw our strength from you so that we know that we can stand firm for you in the storms of life. So Lord, thank you. In Christ's name, amen. Okay, folks, thanks for joining in. See you again tomorrow morning, same time, same place. Till then, take care. God bless. Bye.